Sierra Leone is a resource-rich but poor nation by global standards. It has a population of over 7 million people and is located in West Africa. Nearly half of its population lives in its capital, Freetown, with the rest in the provincial or rural areas. The vast majority of its people depend on subsistence farming for their livelihood, as well as fishing and hunting for traditional bush meat, to name but a few. The legal system still makes use of very old English laws that were designed for colonial needs and are therefore no longer applicable in modern times, where the respect for human rights and dignity has come on the spotlight in line with international best practice. The challenge will be there in 2008, 2009, we've been getting very, very old laws. Laws that we were going way back to then 1921, very, very old laws. In the interland, customary and sometimes undocumented laws continue to take precedence, making the paramount chiefs and local leaders the habitat and custodian of land and other natural resources. The emergence of multi-million dollars foreign investments in large-scale agro-business has left affected communities many times badly disadvantaged and therefore quite dissatisfied. We've been get, we land where we don't already cultivate plantation on them. We not a palm plantation before they come in the camp. Oh, but they live happily inside our plantations then. And not only oil palm no more than the plantation where they live in. We get cacao, we get cola nuts, we get some coconut gardens then. They clear everything where they not do nothing, they don't pay nothing for them. Because the policies in place are largely deemed to be old and weak, some government officials and local authorities have lost themselves over the indigenous people and actual owners of the God-given natural resources, thereby depriving them of the full enjoyment of their legitimate tenure rights, if they documented or not. So I believe the disadvantaged people should be protected. I believe the poorest of the poor eh, should be protected. And I also know most Rwandans are very poor. The only valuable property they have is the land. The recent introduction of a new land policy by the government of Sierra Leone, which incorporated very vital elements of the voluntary guidelines on the responsible governance of tenure of land, fisheries and forest, VGGT, has been viewed by many as a right step in the right direction insofar as mitigating the possibility of violent clashes over tenure rights is concerned. Well, the voluntary guidelines on the responsible governance of tenure for land, fisheries, and forestry within the context of food security, what is just normally called VGGT, was conceived and formulated by the Committee for Food Security. This is a high-level committee in the world comprising of different stakeholders. This committee decided that we should come up with guidelines that will help governments to come up with laws and policies that will help their citizens to access and own land for their livelihoods. The paramount chiefs then been so much strong because they feel saying that they own the land because the law is they are the custodian of the land so they feel saying that they get the land. We not so it be. They just had to argue something for keep. No means that you get her. If you want to use them, you want to get that person, you can't say, hey, that's what you give me for keep. Somebody wants her. You want to get If me agree, okay, get them, then I don't give the authority for them. That's what the power managers are. Even though power managers also belong to land owning families, but I don't make them say, I don't get the land. You know? It just shows, say, this land will give them in trust for them to keep up because they know more about the histories of land. They know more about histories, which family they get land, the, conf the conflict potentials. And so, I mean, mostly paramount they put the land in trust of them. But whenever they want to give land out to people or a company, they need to consult the family that will own the land. It needs to be an agreement. So, now they all the free prior informed consent camp. But we see them all over the country in the past years. We are in companies just they can some paramount just they go sign contracts. They don't even engage the community, they don't engage the people. And, you know, if we are going to the communities, we are going to see most of the testimony from people who say, okay, we will just give land because they say our government say, 
you know, because they say if we don't give land, we don't support the government, we're not, we're there against development. And it shouldn't be that way. They have the right for say, I know they give me land. Then get that right for say, we know they give you land. They also get the right for say, okay, we they give you land, nobody not for stop them. Therefore, even give the land freely. The VGGT would not have come in a much better time than now when natural resources are being politicized and hopes amongst affected persons and communities seem to be going down the drain. We first wrote a petition to the Human Rights Commission. That must have been 2012. The Human Rights Commission held two mediation meetings in Mali to resolve the matter. You know, we've written other letters to the Office of, Nat Office of National Security, to other bodies. With all this, they have recognized the fact that the issue of Amali is political. They don't can sit down, no guns to sit down together. They don't set to the whole problem. Now we command this system, not about this land no more, we pay the, the school fee for we'll them. For, from that time, when they say that they go, they wouldn't come, they say, well, then they put me by this office steps. Now they can't talk. Then the school then the villa. From that year the way they talk, what did they do next? No payment. They just would just the next day where they where they two days making three days like they catch everything. They said to that just, huh? What should they do in this community? Because of the sister, the first one the people left. They just set confusion with me. Issues surrounding land are diverse, ranging from land grabbing to destruction of valuable community farmland and pollution of traditional drinking water resources. I am a farmer. I got a big bush. But now we have a lay farm, with the men we are picking in, and they take everything out. And we will not get nothing for them. People are asked to, to turn print documents when they did not know what was in the agreement. People signed the agreement, there is no family head that has a copy of the agreement. People are asked to give their land, but there is no document to show uh, the, the, the acreage that was what? Acquired from each family or an individual. There is no documentation. And people, uh, we are told, they will negotiate for their land. They will negotiate with the company as to how much the company should pay for their land. That was not done. It was the department chief and the company that decided that they would give each landowner one million news for one acre of our oil palm. Well, uh, the other the former Del Kobe left lake that is uh, close to where my, by my Foki, my big city. Uh, after the lake, we said the lake tap, join the now, now swamp the tail go right up. And then swamp that they, now they where they live. So they'll go get, we said they limit the lake, the swamp then there, we said the swamp there, now they the flooding take place. But I this flooding take place, the Del Kobe left. Uh, 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 this lake, if we give passage for this lake, one hundred men will come. This passage, now they block. As they block the passage, during that time, I be there with them. I, I make reports directly to the sea. I say this passage, if you not block up, this passage they affect the community. I said they put a purpose in the lake was angry. Let no able up. Up there, I did not mean people they get out too much. So I began putting the complaint over two, three weeks. I didn't can, they can't see. Before they can, they meet the other people that meet. Half of, half of the man. Go back and learn the man. I listen to you. I'm going to be. I just listen to you. So long, the road is so kind of busy. So long, the so bad at things. I'm bad when I say I care about the man. So long, the so bad. I listen to you. I'm not too much to play. I'm so worried. So tired. I'm so deep, Papa. Like how do I see the camps? So where do I try to go down? It can see it clean, but chemical lipana. No way, no for drinker. If they see the chemical where they float up, then the, the fish then they die. 
the way you was you, you was with them, you you, you body the scratch. Come and so to lump, come papa bikane, car part to pump, car papa bikane, come back a man cara e erobae, come walk a cara yarn. Kere, a month be not cara, bantishan for my pitch, yaka pitch, cabana totem, no bantisha. One good thing when maybe salon people they don't know is that when ADAC closed, the banks they all get their money back and pay them the money back. But they left lots of negative impact on their communities. And according to them, to them, to them um, um, guiding principles of them banks, and they, they get the do no harm principle. The investment of for create harm and their community. So if they don't come, they don't can't make money. They don't just can't make money. Then go. They left the communities like that. They need and get the responsibility towards their communities. Most affected in all of these are women who, in places like Sierra Leone, are the economic powerhouse of the family, but are at the bottom of the development ladder. We've been realizing the women they actually not get right for own land. So therefore, when companies then come, they only they negotiate with landowners when I mainly man them. So they they. In the sideline, the woman, and we all know that salon will come on upline. We know say woman and the more they use the land at upline. Even if the man and at the head of the home, I mean, most of the man they might two, three women because they want more labor at the farm. So, if woman the way they use the land, not actually get saying on how the land will be distributed, it becomes disadvantageous to them because when companies come and just they talk with the man, then not only for women, for, for people in the rural areas, the land is their, is their office, they depend on the land. For their livelihood. The women particularly spend a lot of time uh, looking for food, farming, uh, to take care of their, their families. Due to these imbalances, the VGGTs put the issue of gender equity at its very core. You know the national land policy is based on the VGGT principles and one of the VGGT principles is gender equity. There has to be fairness for both man and woman. And the national land policy, which is really directed to management of land in this country, has incorporated that nicely in a way that the national land policy is saying that if we have customs, traditions, and practices that discriminate against people on the basis of their sex, we have to repeal that. Also, Based on the VGT principles, the national land policy is saying we have to develop new laws to protect the tenure right of women and girls. It is also calling that we enshrine provisions in the constitution that protect the right of women and girls. Fishing communities also suffer from issues affecting their sustenance. Well, the thing that we the money we bought, where they come across with, this global warming, then with the bad method of fishing, where they don't introduce our country. One, they bring channel fishing, they bring uh, dynamite, there's no monofilament, all the other types of fishing. All them fish, they come up from the north, then they kaya. And yeah, we're going to zone for them fish. Sierra Leone is endowed with a variety of marine products, most of which have, for years, become the subject of poaching, by foreign fishing trawlers. Reports are that the country loses over $100 million yearly to illegal activities at sea. Also important is that the lack of effective monitoring and surveillance of activities at sea have led to the sharp depletion of fish in the local market. Before, we were having large catches in our beaches, but today it is not happening. There are semi-industrial fishing vessels that are being brought into Sierra Leone now. They are called chikichonka. Those are even bad, they are even worse than the, the bigger trolling vessels we are talking about. The type of fishing they are doing, right, is very, very destructive. They are, they are just like the channel. And in fact, they are even more worse than the channel fishermen. They are going right into the creeks, into the rivers, clearing all, even the eggs. The effects of harmful and largely unregulated human activities on the forest in Sierra Leone is quite visible everywhere as community after community appears in areas that were a few years ago densely forested. The negative effect of human actions on the forest was made evident 
when on the 14th August 2017, Sierra Leoneans witnessed a devastating mudslide on a newly established community in the forested mountain village of Regent, killing hundreds. This is where issues relating to land registration and land use planning as proposed by the VGDT and captured in the new land policy count a great deal. These issues re-emphasize the need for a responsible system to address issues surrounding land, thereby proving the timeliness and importance of the VGGT and the new land policy. The influence of the VGGT is also seen in how communities are using it to set up their own local standards for companies wishing to invest in lands, thus making it a conflict preventive tool. Over the years, the VGGT implementation has been able to build up capacities of NGOs, um, civil societies, um, government institutions on some of these best practices. And these best practices have now been incorporated in the local communities. For example, the Board District Council, in line with the VGGT principles, have developed um, an investment guideline, a large-scale land acquisition guideline. This is a guideline that they that was de derived directly from the principles of the VGGT. If an investor wants to come to the board district for acquiring land for investment, they have identified the steps the investment, the investor will have to follow in order for them to be able to grant the investment, in order for them to be able to give the investment a piece of land for the investment. So we have now seen how local communities like the Board District Council have incorporated um, the principles of the VGGT into their guidelines and how it is now helping them in tenure governance. It has also been proven that the VGGT document can also be used to address issues in areas that already have conflicts with investors. Now, as a result of the VGGT implementation, we have had um, an example in Pujaum, Pujaum Makpele Chiefdom. This is where the community and the investment, which is natural habitat, they are now coming together to review their engagement, review their engagement based on the VGGT principles. So we see how the VGGT principles have helped to build the capacities of the local communities, but also we are now seeing how the investment themselves, some of them are now ready, have accepted the principles and they are now ready to renegotiate, to review some of their engagement, some of their agreement based on the VGGT principles. The political willingness to make use of and implement the principles of the VGGT is seen in the institutional framework and the number of documents that it has positively influenced. We created a core mass of stakeholders who started publicly discussing tenor issues. That space provided an institutional framework which was established. One, we have an interministerial tax force which comprises of five ministries. The Ministry of Lands, Country Planning and Environment, the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food Security, the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. At steering committee level, we have a steering committee which also comprises of this, this ministries, civil society organizations. So the first step of the VGDT implementation in Sierra Leone was a comprehensive assessment uh, for the land, fisheries and forestry sectors, where we looked at the current policy and legal framework uh, that was in place and uh, identified gaps and incons inconsistencies with the VGDT principles. Uh, based um, on this analytical work, um, recommendations were developed which uh, the government took on board for their ongoing re review and reform processes. Um, so one good example um, regarding the application of these recommendations is the national land policy that is uh, very much aligned with the voluntary guidelines. And uh, also currently we are supporting the government in the uh, review of the current la uh, land laws 
and uh, we also provided comments on the draft fisheries bill, the draft forestry act, the draft investment approval process and the draft uh, constitutional review uh, report. The objective of all of this is to have a consistent and coherent policy and legal framework for improved tenure governance in the country. But how does the civil society perceive the VGT? Abdullah Bunwai is the national coordinator of ALAT. Firstly, the policymakers, our government, has signed up to an international agreement and he is under, they are under obligation to respect it, although it's a soft law. So the VGGT has given us uh, a tool to hold government accountable as far as respect for tenure rights and enjoyment of those rights and reduction of conflict regarding to land acquisitions, corruption, you know, um, women access to land. When the VGGT came and really told us that regardless of whether uh, these ownership rights are written or not, they are legitimate. As mentioned earlier, the full implementation of the new land policy is key to addressing endemic problems relating to tenure rights and access to natural resources. The actualization of the VGGTs and implementation of the new land policy is only possible with ongoing monitoring that improves the governance of tenure of land, fisheries and forests for the benefit of all Sierra Leoneans, especially for vulnerable and marginalized communities and people including women with the goal of attaining national food security preventing conflicts and addressing corruption. In all this, it is important to note that the VGGTs provide Sierra Leone a unique opportunity for the very first time in its history of being singled out as a pilot country for the testing of an international best practice instrument. It is therefore important that all stakeholders such as the government of Sierra Leone, civil society, private investors, and affected communities work in earnest to see it succeed.